We have a pretty simple idea that we wanted to present today that we believe would serve Americans and commerce and provide a far-reaching and inexpensive platform for innovation and innovators just starting out. Like a lot of simple ideas, it uh, spreads and broadens and it sells itself the moment it uh, is introduced, but also uh, progress can be disruptive and creative destruction is painful and we're, we know about that and we're sensitive to that. The simple idea that I have for you today is pro to provide affordable financial services to Americans who lack access to them. Also to make our widespread network available to those who need to use or exchange financial instruments which will allow customers to move among uh, physical currencies like cash and money orders and checks and digital currencies, prepaid cards and credit cards and rapidly evolving debit cards. In order to upload cash to debit cards, uh, download debit cards to money orders, to, for instance, to pay your rent, uh, to cash paychecks and to reload uh, prepaid cards using cash. It's not a particularly original idea. Most postal operators around the world uh, already provide financial services. The U.S. Postal Service is the notable exception among industrialized nations. It provided financial services in the United States until 1967 when banks began paying interest rates that were higher than the Postal Service was allowed by law. Uh, further, the Postal Service already sells money orders, international remittances, runs a huge cash retail business. It also sells um, insurance on mail and parcels, and it has it for years, and we already cash treasury checks. So our white paper considered the concept of the Postal Service expanding those non-bank financial services in order to meet 21st century needs. With its presence in just about every community, the Postal Service is everywhere. The platform would be open to everyone, banks and credit card companies and credit unions and other institutions, and they could offer these products alongside one another competitively. Post offices would be available to enable their use and their exchange. And the Postal Service has my office and the Postal Inspection Service to investigate provider fraud and deceptive practices where abuses are found. To have, you, to have your products on the postal platform, you would need to clearly identify its attributes, the fee structure and interest rates and new features such as savings functions. Customers walking into a post office or accessing services online through USPS.com would see a chart of the products transparently displayed you could compare features and select with a click of a button. The platform could also have a certification process. For example, prepaid cards and small loans and other products offered through the postal platform could be approved as meeting industry standards and using guidelines of the FDIC or the financial industry. If you walk into a post office looking for a product, you know you won't encounter deceptive sales practices. You can upload or reload a debit card redeem or exchange a prepaid card for cash or money orders when you need them with no worries that there's somebody there trying to lure you into a trap or push you toward an abusive product. Let's take a step back and look at the historic role um, of the Postal Service as an enabler of commerce. It isn't a new role for the Postal Service. Um, supporting commerce is one of its founding missions. There are three parts to supporting commerce. Communications about the products, and transactions. Number two, the payment for the product and the delivery of the product. The Postal Service um, has two of those down pat. But in recent years, it's lagged in the payment element. Its financial products do not enable e-commerce or financial instrument exchange. It's long been a leader in paper money orders. We've issued 103 million of them last year and just about every year. Creative destruction from the digital age is still raging on, and nobody wants to be the next blockbuster or tower record store owner. Trust me, the Postal Service knows all about this. We've had creative destruction pointed directly at our heads for the last 10 years. But the Postal Service never once asked that letter mail be preserved at the expense of email, Facebook, Twitter, 
that would only harm the nation and its businesses and its people. Well, so would preventing access to financial services in order to protect abusive predators. Nobody has the right to deprive Americans of technological progress or e-commerce e access or force citizens into the hands of predators. $89 billion in fees and interest that buys nothing. Not food and not clothing and not shelter. Bad for Americans, terrible for American commerce. 